to talk to all of you about what great things have been happening in this country. And I think uh, ever since I received this request uh, to be a part of it, I was wondering uh, what would be my direction of uh, connecting to you. Because when we talk about uh, government of India, we talk about skills, we talk about entrepreneurship, we are actually, uh, when we carry this whole debate further, we try to analyze as where we stand today. Well, we have started working on the direction of skills and last couple of months I have been consistently trying to focus as where we stand as far as skill development in this country is concerned. And when we compare ourselves internationally, we stand absolutely, uh, if I have to compare it with, uh, as far as skills are concerned, uh, even a country like China would have 46% uh, of the population which is skilled and compared to the population which they have is 1.4 billion or more. Even if you talk about uh, United Kingdom, the 68% of the population of the workforce is skilled. We talk about Germany, 74% of the workforce is skilled. And if you proceed further and talk about Korea, uh, on the skill side, 96% of the workforce is skilled. But when you talk about India, we come with a figure of just 2% and it could be disputed, it could be 3% or maybe 4%, but at the end of the day, when you're talking about a country like India with 1,260 million people, and I think skills along with entrepreneurship is an aspect which needs to be addressed. And I must say uh, that it's not that skills or entrepreneurship has not been happening in this country, it's been happening, people, initiatives have been made, but possibly uh, the government approach towards it, possibly uh, government's viewpoint on it, or to have a focused approach, it was only whether uh, this new government was formed. And Mr. Modi decided that we need to have something fresh and look into it, something new, when you're talking about skill development and entrepreneurship, whether it's entrepreneurship or innovation. And with the formation of the new government, uh, in May, we had a Department of Entrepreneurship and Skills, which was attached to the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs. But I think that was not good enough for Mr. Modi, and the Prime Minister decided that uh, in November, when the expansion took place, when I was inducted as the Union Council, I was given this assignment as an independent charge. I may not necessarily be a part of this ventures and the spirit behind this is something very different because my forte has been very different in previous governments. But I think once I have been into it, I think it's the biggest challenge and the biggest assignment which this government has today. And if I call it as the biggest assignment which the government has in it, there is a challenge of training and what we call the demographic dividend which we are talking today, where more than 356 million youngsters between the age group of 15 to 35 and even China has much less, which is about 250 million. But even if you have to compare it with Pakistan, which has about 60 million. So that is the dividend which we are talking about. And when we are talking about these, these issues, we are also talking about entrepreneurship because jobs do not get, get created only through government mechanism. And if you look at the population today, which is about uh, in the, in the population of 1,260 million people, only 30 million people would be in formal government jobs, and the 10 million would be in the informal or the corporates or uh, which would draw their salary from the banks. And that figure is too small as compared to 1,260 uh, million people. The NSSO and the National uh, Survey Organization says that we have around 540 million people in the unorganized sector. And this stands poses as a major challenge. And all of this 550 million people which we talk in the unorganized sector, 54% uh, is there in the agriculture sector. So that leaves us uh, with a good number of around 250 million people who are actually young, who are actually uh, untrained, and who are actually unemployed. So this makes part of the whole story. and. Uh, and, and this is the challenge which we have today, but where we do have the resources for it. We actually do not have these resources. 
And if I was calculating uh, in Indian, Indian rupees, that even if it is uh, for this uh, uh, 25 crore people or 250 million people which we want to train, because these are the people who can't afford to train themselves. Let's have a look at it when we talk about education. Last 66 years, education has been there. I mean, spent maybe uh, a lakh crore rupees every year. So for the last 60 years, we have been spending. So we have matriculates, we have graduates, we have postgraduates, we have doctorates. But that is not good enough to create employment. And, and that is where we have been lacking. And that amount of resource which has gone to, to educate people is actually not good enough for employable. A recent study indicates that 17% uh, of the uh, management graduates in this country are unemployable. A good 20% of the engineering graduates in this country are unemployable. So even if we had people who had a stint or an training, even as a, uh, as a graduate or an undergraduate, could have had uh, uh, very interesting outcomes. I could, I'll just mention you why we're talking about all this thing together. Now, since I head the Ministry of Entrepreneurship and Skills, I must mention, but we'll come with a very small example today, is I received a letter from uh, the ambassador the Indian ambassador in Peru, Lima. And all of you can assess, we have international guests here, uh, the location of Peru, which is uh, from Delhi, it would be 17,000 kilometers. And the number of people who stay in, Indians who stay in Peru today is about 248 or 249 by the census of there. But can you imagine the ambassador uh, in, in, uh, in Peru wants to find out uh, why is it so that we are, the, the Indian Embassy in Peru is issuing visas uh, to people, to individuals who come to Delhi and Jaipur to operate uh, load dumpers, to operate long hole, uh, long hole uh, drillers and forklift operators. So imagine 66 years down the line, for the basics which you import, whether it's a caterpillar or it's a 3DX uh, machine to cut the roads, people are coming all the way 17,000 kilometers from Peru to operate these basic things. So while you proceed towards innovations, we are still struggling with the basic which requires no innovation. These are the standards which are there which we need and you could train someone or educate someone for 10 years and he cannot get a job of 5,000 rupees, but anyone who has been educated for 10 years is given a three months training on a, as a forklift operator can earn easily uh, 40,000 rupees here. So this is the mismatch. And possibly when you're talking about entrepreneurship, when you're talking about you know, innovations, this is one field where we can get into. And I think the innovations which create employment, innovations in the social sector is also could be clubbed in a different way. I've just quoted this example to explain you where we stand today. And when we're talking about all this, uh, we have 24 ministries in Government of India talking about skills and entrepreneurship. We have dedicated ministries in Government of India which is talking about entrepreneurship. And we know the number of startups which we have in this country and the number of incubation or angel investment which comes is almost, uh, is absolutely we. There was a survey which indicate, indicated that out of 79 countries, entrepreneurship in India stands at 74. So that's we are from the bottom. Out of surveyed 125 countries, innovation is reasonable but still stands 62. Out of the G20 countries, uh, out of 20 countries, access to funding in India is at the 11th position. Uh, in the G20 countries, we on uh, entrepreneurship culture, we stand around 11. Tax and regulations out of G20, we stand at 19. And uh, Coordinated support, which is because in our country like ours, which has a family, which has friends, which have a setup, which is five, which is reasonably high. And that's the only impressive point about us. But uh, today for this function, a lot of you have come on innovations, and I believe the 14 individuals who are there. And uh, I was just thinking, I was just thinking, uh, and I was hearing them out, and I heard there are two IAM graduates who bring and are planning to sell gingers from Sikkim. And I was somewhere in South recently and a product which I will not share 
and I've been thinking about it, and I know that it's going to hit as an entrepreneur because I can't speak that I'm going to go into such innovations myself. Uh, I was thinking, and I know that product, which I got from a friend in Kurg, and two specific wildly found, uh, I'll not share it with you. <laughs> and I said, if someone had an idea, and, and that could be a big uh, innovation, and I'm, I, if, I, if I could brand it as Rudy's X and Rudy's Y, and sometime it would be a brand across, and I'm sure I would be here to take that award from you, Mr. Rai. So I think there are many more things this country is doing. I've, I'll just recall an innovation which may be very simple, but uh, something very, uh, uh, some entrepreneur in Ludhiana, you must catch hold of this gentleman and get him here. It's not exactly a social enterprise, but he did something like this. He used to import machines, uh, treadmills from China. And uh, from Ludhiana, places in Himachal Pradesh, about 100 kilometers or less. So there are many people, he wanted to sell those machines and uh, the treadmills and cross trainers low cost to costing about 30,000 or 40,000. So the cost of the machine was around 30,000. The cost of transportation in a truck was about 30,000. So there were buses coming down to Ludhiana where he walked up to one of these Himachal Road Transport Corporations and talked to their bosses that how much does a seat cost to go to an X destination in Himachal Pradesh. And they said 260 rupees. So he said, if I don't occupy the seat and if I can carry my luggage, how much do you pay? There's 260 rupees. So he started loading his machines there to a particular destination in that hill station. And the receipt of transport, he used to make that receipt, take a photo on his smartphone, and, and send it on a WhatsApp to the customer. The customer would wait for that bus, get it done, unloaded, spend another 500 rupees, and then almost 750 rupees, he will take that product, which would actually have costed him a good, uh, another 20,000 to transport it. And that village is a rich village, and many people, and almost 22 people, have got the machines like this. So I think this is a great innovation, and there are many more people and many more ideas in this country, and there could be hundreds of brilliant ideas and, on entrepreneurship and growth. But this occasion is just to uh, put in sync the policies of the government, which has just begun. We have rolled out many things. I just today concluded a press conference for the first time holding my discussion with the media after this ministry was created. And when I was talking to them, I said, please understand this is one ministry which is, should have been in existence 60 years ago when the country came into existence. Because many countries would have had an act on skills and skill development 100 years ago. I just can't recall those names, but Germany had an act, uh, Australia had an act. On, I, I, there were many more countries which have an act on skill development. So while I was speaking to them, I said, we have to understand that we have to bring the standards across the country on a one platform. There can't be 10 standards for one job. So most of us would not still in this country understand what is a national occupation standard. We are mapping what is the skill gap. We are not, we are not understanding what is the qualification pack or a job role. And how, what, how do you explain a job role? And what is the NSQF, which is National Skills Qualification Framework? Now the country, every training in this country has to align with the NSQF. And in next 2000, 2017, all those government agencies which will not align with NSQF would cease to get any government grants. And by another two years, by 2019, all government employment, suggestively, if it is not NSQF compliant to a person whom you are going to employ, would not be fit for a government job. So we are moving in, in, a, in a strong way. And for the first time, we are talking about innovations. And we said that recognizing the talent of an individual who may not be certified, for example, the mines, workers in the mines in this country. And I was talking to the coal minister yesterday. And we immediately decided, because it's something called the recognition of prior learning. Now, when talking about RPL and certification, he said that we have half a million coal mine workers in this country who actually do not have any certification. They do not have anything except they are employed. They do not have any qualification. So we decided that in the next six months, we'll try to certify and give the certificates and assess all these half a million workers in the mines in this country to... So there are many more things happening, and, and I think we have to, we have to align 
But on the other, other hand, we talk about corporates uh, doing philanthropic action. We talk about non-profit organizations workers, working to, uh, for philanthropic reasons. But here is an organization, and I thank, and I must say that this innovation, which possibly started seven years ago, and the way you have been uh, putting in sync all the activities to say that there could be profits in social activities, but it could, be, it could be an entrepreneurship, it could be innovation, is something which is a very novel idea. I must congratulate all of you for coming along and all the participants within the country internationally who have come here. And we will try to weave all what you have achieved in course of time, because this particular ministry uh, launched or uh, started by Mr. Modi is to partner you. We are not a government. We are flexible enough to come along and walk a step and walk along to see that we can achieve many more things and, and jobs can only be created on innovations and entrepreneurship. And this is what we believe when we're talking about this country like India. So this is a small moment for us. And, and thank you, uh, Dilip Chanoy, who is, I can say this, another innovation with a partnership like you is NSDC, the National Skill Development Corporation, which is a private body with, with the Ministry of uh, skill development and entrepreneurship. And it's a private body which works almost innovatively and we give that a free hand to work. And we've created the sector skill councils, 33 of them who are working on the QPs and the NOSES and trying to create because now we need to create that the demand of the industry has to be met by the demand created by the industry and the requirements of the industry has to be mapped and met by the syllabus or the qualification packs of the industry. We have to move in the education side where innovations become a part of the entire uh, part of uh, thought process in the curriculum where people can innovate. So from the standardized 60 years of education pattern, we have to move to a more innovative systems. And, and I think we have to, both by financial inclusion, by partnering, by venture capitals, by all the philanthropic actions, by through angel investors, we have to get this whole thing which you all have done for the last seven years to it should go ahead and, and we are, I'm glad that, and I would always say that the Ministry of uh, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship will come along with you to partner you in any of these activities, activities which could not only, or not only enhance what we have in India, but internationally as well. Thank you very much.